Mine has been a life of much shame. I can't even guess myself what it must be to live the life of a human being. One of my favorite books of all time is No Longer Human by Osamu Daisai. It is um, a really important book to me. It's uh, bar none, one of the most important things I think I've ever read. And I think it's one of the greatest insights, I believe, and one probably one of the most accurate depictions of what it means to have a horrible, 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 crippling depression. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't going to be a fun time. It's not. Um, Osamu Daisai is an author that was sadly one of the cases of his work only really becoming popular after his death. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a tragedy, s visceral tragedy, that he never really earned it, the success I believe he deserved within his own home country. Until, of course, after he and his wife ended up committing suicide together and, you know, some twisted form of a, you know, fucking irony beyond any semblance of belief, they uh, committed suicide together and their bodies were found on his birthday. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's some fucked shit. It just seems Daisai just never had any good luck. The book itself is, um, essentially what I would say is an autobiographical work. Although certainly Osama Daisai would say that most of it's done for the character of Oba Yozu who is kind of similar in terms of um, how the name of the structure of their names are, which I don't think is any coincidence. I think it was just um, an attempt to, you know, tell a story if I'm necessarily telling the story. And a lot of people say that just was simply entering the character and revealing so much truth and reality probably was what led to Daisai's suicide. And honestly, considering the life he led and the life he lived and the life he suffered through, can you really blame him? Honestly? <laughs> It's, uh, it's not a positive book. Honestly, I would say it's just, if it's someone that just doesn't appreciate the bleak or anything, and just has this odd need to escape reality, I don't think anyone would read this book. And, uh, thankfully I'm not that kind of person. I was never that kind of person to shy away from horrible or uncomfortable things. And, uh, I'm kind of grateful for this because this book is, uh, the book I relate to the most. I don't really relate to most stories about positivity or living life necessarily i've always been uh care just sort of a, this type of character that i've always really appreciated <laughs> just to have uh this uh sense of horrible self-loathing and haze and just moral apathy and just general disturbance towards the world and just feeling the need to wear a mask <laughs> it's uh, it, it was horrifying to me how much i related towards the main character how much i related to osama daisai and the worst and in the best and in every aspect pretty much feeling this need to you know sort of hide who i was beneath a more comedic mask and osamu you just one of my main reasons i love japanese literature is just this very much tell don't show type of style and osamu's type of character here type of writing is very introspective and very much as a reflection, I believe, of a man who truly was broken down by the world, and it it's its just one of the rawest uh, portrayals I think I've seen, and I have yet to see stories that honestly match the part of it, with the exception of uh, the book of The Squiet, which is my favorite book of all time, and one I consider one of the finest pieces of literature ever written, and of course some other books I won't discuss in the future. But uh, it's um, it's 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 a book that's not positive. It's a book without a happy ending. It's a book where, in which if you do more research out of it, you're not gonna find a happy ending. To try and find a positive messaging in all this is just not possible, I believe. And uh, <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons why I love this book so much. Uh, beyond my emotional attachment of how much I relate towards it, it's. A book that's haunted me because it's real it's bar nine one of the realest stories ever it's Osamo's confession and I find a man willing to discuss and just lay himself bare regardless of success regardless of everything just to be admirable in a way and it's at the same time it's just heartbreaking to know no one really helped this man 
His family disowned him after he attempted suicide of another woman and ended up surviving his own failed suicide. He's the type of man who was repeatedly sexually abused as a child by servants and maidens and just completely never understood why. He never felt as if he could express himself, so he's always how just hiding behind this just mask of a clown, just trying to pretend he's happy when he's miserable. His friend is just there because he's a man who's honest and doesn't hide behind anything. And it's the only reason he's even friends with him, but even then he learns that his friend doesn't really play anything there. And again, he finds a wife and he fosters a child, but it's just, he's not happy. He's miserable doing everything he can. He, he doesn't have any dreams or aspirations to succeed. He doesn't know what he is. He doesn't feel like he fits into the idea of what a human being is. And it's, it's just feeling the sensation of being this apathetic creature that you're just so distant from the world. It's one of the most hauntingly realistic depictions of this kind of mentality. And I related it. I related it to it so fucking much. And it's just horrifying. <laughs> and the ending, it's its implied even in the story that uh, Oba Yozu committed suicide. Or just died naturally from his years of alcohol poisoning, of sexual abuse and prostitution and everything along those lines. And... Of course, Osamu committed suicide with his wife in real life, and it's just, it's just this voidless thing that it's just heartbreaking to see. And I can't really express <laughs> just how much this book hurts to read. It's not happy. <laughs> it's miserable, and it's real, and I love it for it. It's why I hate just this thin veil, this need for positivity, because this man let out a cry for help, and he didn't receive it. So many cries for help, and people just treated him indifferently, like he was a burden, and it's just so fucking horrifying to see. And it's a very interesting look insight into what Japan's life and culture was, of what the mentality of society is, and it's very much another issue with Japan's society as well, but I feel like that's a video for another time. I adore this book, and I do recommend so many people read it to experience. But it's like to not only enter the mind of a broken man, but to enter the mind of a man who just isn't, just doesn't feel human. It's, uh, it's a book I relate to. I think it's the realest thing out there, and I, I understand if don't, people don't want to read that. People just don't believe that someone can make this many bad decisions and judge and say, like, just just so many people I just feel as though won't get the book and I know that and it's gonna frustrate me but when you're this at the brink honestly what do you have to live for this isn't a happy ending this is a video without jokes this is just uh this is just the world and this is the world of AJP Let's talk to you guys later honestly um, it's been this booktober and hopefully, uh, <laughs> one that's more positive, I hope. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not. <laughs> We're talking about my other favorite depressed author next time. If you can to guess who it is, you'll know it. <laughs> See you guys later. Now I have neither happiness nor unhappiness. Everything passes. That is the one and only thing I have thought resembled a truth in a society of human beings, where I've devolved up to now as in a burning hell. Everything passes. I have this year, I am 27. My hair has become much grayer. Most people would take me for over 40. No Longer Human by Osama Daisai. <laughs>